Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Clinton, and I'm here with Erica Mello, my co-host on Tough to Treat. And this is the podcast number 79, Erica. Mm -hmm. And before we launch into the podcast, we wanted to thank everybody for your great reviews. We love the 77 five-star reviews we have so far. So um, as my uh, great niece likes to say, like and subscribe. Yes, yes. Maybe by our 100th uh, podcast, we'll have 100 reviews. That would be amazing if we could. Wouldn't that get be that. great? Yes. So, in order to keep it going, we want to read one from one of our re uh, listeners mm -hmm. that just got posted recently. And yes. we thought it was a great review because it'll lead right into what we're talking about on this podcast today yep. and uh, reveal the winner of our contest for this yes. time. Yes. So, this one is from. Uh, uh, DPT underscore 2020. So if that's your iTunes handle, uh, you're going to have to contact us. So you love the review is perfect for DPT students on rotation. Love hanging out with you ladies on my one hour drive to my first full time ortho rotation. Breath of cases helps prepare me for whoever walks in for an evaluation. Thanks for sharing your wonderfully pelvic informed straight ortho, psychosocial, sensitive way of approaching patients. Thank you to everybody who's left us a review and uh, we truly appreciate it. And uh, DPT underscore 2020, if you are listening to this podcast, you need to contact myself or Susan to redeem your free webinar. So if you are not a member of our Facebook group or if you are not on our email list, go to www.toughtotreat.com or join the Facebook group um, uh, Tough to Treat podcast or email myself, eric at ericamello.com or susan at susan at embody-pt.com to claim your prize. Thank you. And we are glad we have helped you. Okay. Awesome. And yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, so yeah, move, so, yeah, moving uh, along. So Susan and I have a, a great announcements um, coming up for the fall. And I don't want to reveal so, so much of the details, but um, we're going to be starting a, uh, a membership, a membership mentoring program. And we're going to send the details out uh, shortly. Uh, we're just still sort of finalizing the logistics. And it's a great okay. opportunity for those of you who want real life mentoring uh, you know, versus going into, you know, a residency or a fellowship program where we're mentoring, uh, you know, you have to pay for that, that at a very high price. So this is your opportunity to get us one-on-one -on -one and, uh, you know, join up with a bunch of other clinicians in discussing patient cases. So look out for the details. And once again, toughtotreat.com is the website. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy. Okay, jo join our Facebook group. Uh, some great Facebook lives. Come on, okay, yep, come on, come on to YouTube and like and subscribe there. Go to your favorite uh, place where you listen to podcasts and um, drop us a review. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to podcast number 79 for Tough to Treat. I'm Susan Clinton, and I'm here with my co-host, Erica Mello. Hi, Erica. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. At the time that we're, po we're uh, sending this podcast out, it's actually going to be pretty close to real time to release. So we're looking at uh, closer to the end of August here, and I think everybody is still trying to navigate the best way to move around uh, our environments and everything right now so yes yes for sure I mean it's the they always say the dog days of August and uh, they're not kidding right I mean it's been hot and we're trying to navigate and uh, you know uh, here in New York things have gotten better but um, you know school starting soon so yeah definitely definitely <laughs> we shall so, see <laughs> yep. yes everything is kind of uh, just a like a week by week basis it seems like yes yeah. So, okay. Well, let's get to it. Today, I'm going to talk about something a little different that we've really discussed much in the past, but um, I had a client that he's a well-known uh, client of mine. I've seen him for uh, various issues. Um, I've seen him for foot pain. I've seen him for kind of an abdominal injury, but it was more of an expression of pain in his abdominal area. 
uh, you know, that he did very well with. Um, and um, he's presenting today, uh, or he presented to me just this summer, uh, a few months ago, um, with a history of uh, tingling in his hands and uh, soreness in his elbows on the medial side. Um, right, greater than left. And uh, just an interesting backstory with him. Um, he is a very smart individual and is very open and vocal about uh, ruminating and anxiousness. Um, he even uses words such as, I wonder if I'm pathologizing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing guy, very, very insightful to what's going on to him. Um, but besides all of that wonderful stuff that he has for going for him, he let the symptoms chase him around for about a year. Mm. So let me just give you the backstory on the history here. Um, in October of last year, he started having um, problems with soreness from his elbow to his wrist uh, on both sides, the right greater than the left. Um, and he also started noticing a little bit later uh, discomfort and tingling on the back side of his forearm or the radial side for all of us clinicians out there um, into the, the uh, index finger and the uh, dorsal surface of the thumb. So he had kind of two things going on. He had the tingling on the top uh, you know, following kind of the C5, C6 distribution. And then of course he had the T1, uh, the C7, C8, T1 kind of distribution coming down the, the hand. Uh, his story was kind of interesting. He started chasing uh, symptoms um, back in October when this was happening. And what he was doing at the time was he was exercising. Uh, he was exercising on the treadmill for walking walking his dog, gardening, and doing upper body exercises. And he started doing the upper body exercises because he was having some issues with his shoulder uh, two or three years ago. And it's something that I, I saw him for back then. And at that time, we uncovered the idea that, uh, you know, maybe shoulder and movement exercises will be good. And uh, he found out that the more active he was with his upper body, the better he was. He has a pretty sedentary job. Um, so he, you know, got busy into an upper body strengthening program, um, doesn't have any symptoms when he does this, although he says that he stopped exercising for a while because he was worried that he was hurting himself. The reason he had shoulder issues, well, he, again, the diagnoses that he had were everything from scapular dyskinesia to uh, bicipital tendinopathy. Mm -hmm. He had them all, all the diagnoses, all the things. According to him. <laughs> according, yeah. according to him and yeah. according to, the, these are, the, these ah. are diagnoses ah. that physicians and PTs ah. gave him. Got it, got it. And he still, still gets stuck on the uh, scapular dyskinesia. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, but he, he does really well with exercise and he's kind of, you know, all of this stirred everything up again. Maybe it was from the shoulder thing a long time ago. I don't know. He was kind of like he said, he goes, you know how I do. I ruminate and then I get anxious about it. And then I really worry that I'm hurting myself. And he goes, and that's why I decided I'd better come see you because the next step they want to do for my arm, for my uh, uh, elbow soreness and tingling is they want to do a complete ulnar nerve repositioning. Oh my God. I know. A little no. drastic. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh my goodness. EMG, they, they did do an EMG negative as far as like there, there isn't any, you know, slowing of muscle twitching or, you know, it's just that he's having symptoms. And uh, so I, so, you know, I kind of just talked to him a little bit about, hey, what's going on in your life? What's happening? what are you doing? What's, what's, what's occurring? You know, how did this come up? What's making you crazy about it? And he said that when he's on his computer or on his cell phone, more his cell phone than anything else, this is when he really gets the symptoms. And um, when he's working out, not so much because he did start doing the upper body exercises again, because he thought I probably should do them. And he doesn't really have symptoms when he does it. He doesn't have any symptoms when he gardens. He does notice, he said, I've taken up photography and I, I have noticed that when I'm taking pictures a lot, it comes on. 
And the cell phone is when he is holding the phone, right? He's, he's doing multiple things. He's got uh, a couple of camera bodies that he uses. He uses a cell phone and uh, he has a, he has a um, what do you call it? Uh, the Tripod? No, not a tripod. It's a, the uh, telescoping lens that, that uh, attaches to the cell phone. So oh he's boy. got... He's got a number of things that he's doing and he loves it. He absolutely loves it. But he says, I do notice when I'm spending time with it that uh, it brings my symptoms on. So he was, you know, pretty, you know, pretty good about telling me what was bothering him and what wasn't, what he was worried about the most and what wasn't. Um, and, and, you know, kind of what he was, you know, uh, he just was really concerned because he's never had tingling before. Mm. He's had pain before and he goes, and I can kind of understand the pain yeah. part of it all, you know, from working with you, but he goes, I'm not, I'm not getting the whole tingling thing. So yeah. yep. basic, you have any questions so far? No, I was just saying when I had my injury years ago to my hip, I was like, I can deal with pain, but tingling and numbness, no bueno. That just freaked me out. So I get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. You know, right. so, but I'm good right now. Yep. So, um, he, he, he is able to say that when he gets really ruminating and more anxious about it, it does increase his symptoms. Yeah, yeah. Um, is he right-handed, Susan? He is right-handed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he had, he's having the symptoms on the left side, too. Too, both sides. Yep. So, yep. Uh, and like, again, it seems that the cell phone manipulation is the most aggravating me manipulating and so when while I he's... asked him, like just standing, sitting there, texting, sitting ah, there, texting. scrolling, yeah. sitting there, reading everything. He does a lot on his cell phone. Yes. Okay. And he says, you know, he goes, I, yes, I goes, I can get into it for hours. And, oh uh, you know, like anybody, they kind of kind of get lost in, in email land or, you know, whatever else is going on. And, uh, yeah. you know, he just says, I notice the symptoms the most with my cell phone. So. Okay. Um, just to back up for a second, I did give him questionnaires. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I know him, but I still sent it all out, unbiased, like, fill mm -hmm. these out, let's go. And of course, he came back with high central sensitization scores. Yeah. Um, high uh, pain catastrophization and high in the Tampa kinesiophobia and high on the anxiety of the DAS. Of which, the DAS. Yeah. didn't surprise me you know yeah. and again he admit he's you know he knows this about himself he does have some of the things that came out um are digestion issues and uh urinary frequency um and he does he did talk a little bit about his diet and how over the last year his diet has really gotten pretty bad pretty constipated having a lot of um ibs -E type symptoms and of course anxiety makes all of those worse as well yeah. I'm re bringing that up out there because people are kind of probably sitting there wondering why is she asking about all this stuff. But these are the things that the, the, the questionnaire asks. When you have this going on and you have other things going on, all of these combine to make that, that nervous system very sensitive. Yes, and it's for pe those of us, who, people, we've discussed, I think, the questionnaires on another podcast but for the listeners it's this like the csi the tsk is a tampa kinesiophobia right pain, cata that, pain catastrophization, pain catastrophization scale. And the um you know i didn't send him the scale on injustice or the right, free right. the free mantle or any of those because yeah. it wasn't really back related but i did want to get an idea of kind of where he was riding on the sensitivity scale yeah because it and, changes it changes how you view the patient you it, yeah it it, 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 it it i personally think that you, you establish a better connection with the patient in a way because right. you understand them, right? right? Right, and I think what ends up happening most of the time with me anyway, is when I give these forms, most of the people who fill them out, I would have to say like 90% of my clients that fill them out, yeah. when I meet with them the first time, I ask them, I'll say, what'd you think about all those forms? Yeah. Thanks for filling them out. What'd you think about that? Yeah. And most of them will say to me, it really brought up things that I really hadn't thought about, you know, and how that relates to what's going on with me. Yeah. Yeah. So it actually opens the door for them to have a bigger conversation, you know, because if I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody had just tried to treat him with just, a, you know, kind of a pathology or a biomechanical pathological approach, um, they were going to keep spinning their wheels as the other two uh, therapists and physicians have done. He's yes. seen he's seen two PTs an OT, 
and two physicians for this problem. So yeah, and it, yeah, now this it, guy runs from doctor to doctor. I get that. But you know, but you have to kind of look at all of that and start saying, okay, what's the common denominator here and what yeah. is going to really help him begin to start to see this just a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, none of them looked at what he does functionally. They just said, oh, you probably have overuse and just left it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had him get it. So you can imagine how this kind of went. You know, we had the conversation. I just told you about most of the conversation there. He realizes that he probably needs to clean up his diet a little bit, that that may be driving some inflammatory responses for yes. him. And yeah, yeah, his foot has been hurting a little bit more again. And, you know, he's a little worried about his shoulder. So all of those somatical kind of things are starting to kind of creep up to the surface on top of this, this uh, thing in his arm. But, you know, he's, he's just, he's, you know, his focus is on his arms and uh, the tingling and things. So what we did was we just basically took a quick look at range of motion and, you know, just to make sure there wasn't contributing factors from the cervical spine. Uh, he does complain of neck tightness. The guy spends time on the computer and his cell phone. I mean, he has a job mm -hmm. that requires that. So yeah, it's, you've got to move every so often. So we did some remind, gentle reminders about, hey, moving, changing positions, doing things. But I, basically what I did with him is I said, where do you sit when you get on your cell phone and you start to feel these symptoms? And yeah. he pretty much could tell me, you know, most of the time where he was, what was going on. And so I just said, put yourself in that position and let's start looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we did, and we started changing things, and we started kind of bargaining a little bit. It's like, what would you, what would happen if you, he's right. on his couch, basically, and I said, yeah. what would happen if you grab your couch pillow and put it under your yeah. hands? Yep. You know, what would happen if you actually sat at the kitchen table and did it, or put it in a, like a, like yep. a holder, so it could stand up and you could just swipe and keep doing, and he was, you know, he, all things that were simple that he just wasn't thinking about. And basically what it was, was what I was trying to do was get him to dose his activity so that it wouldn't create these symptoms. So like, how long can you actually work on your cell phone before these symptoms come on? How long can you take pictures? Like when you're out doing photography, uh, how long does it take before it comes on? And what would happen if you changed camera bodies at that time or if you took a break? So what we started doing was I sent him home with a lot of activity about tell me when it, you know, begin to start noticing when it happens, notice your positions and notice if change makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And notice that with the two things that are really bothering you mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. your cell phone and with picture taking. Yeah. <clears throat> he also said that he has a, a, a new car and mm -hmm. he feels like the new car is, a, he's been doing a lot of driving because of the photography. Yeah. And he said, so he wonders if the new car bothers him. And I said, do you have you know this tingling when, when you're in the car and he goes only when i start to get anxious and then he kind of told me a story about who he was with in the car and that yeah you know sometimes that makes him anxious so there was some relationship things there going on as well so yeah. anyway um but they we just kind of went back to it it's like can you change the position in the car a little bit raise the yeah. steering wheel up or lower it down put your hands in a different spot on the steering wheel let's just see how irritable this is yep because he just wasn't, he was like, it comes on when I do it, but he wasn't really, he goes, you know, I really don't know if it, if it's an hour or 10 minutes or whatever it is. So that's what he went home with. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, because of your, you know, I said, what do you want to change, you know, as, as far as the other stuff, the other contributing factors? And he says, well, I'm drinking a lot of coffee. He goes, maybe I should back off the caffeine a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I said, that's up to you. You know, there's a contributing factor probably for sure, but that's not yeah. the main thrust of what we're doing, but the, the you know, if you feel that uh, changing your diet a little bit and, uh, you know, uh, backing off on the caffeine, I said, all of that could help your sensitive nervous system, you know, be less sensitive. It's not the end all, but it's definitely a piece of it. So, you know, go ahead, you know, take mm -hmm. that over. And then, and so I sent him home with ideas about, you know, uh, you know, how I wanted him to kind of really take a look at, um, you know, strategies and, and, yeah. you know, all the things that he was doing and really start kind of giving, you know, himself an opportunity to really uh, understand this from a different point of view. Yeah. So questions or anything well, there? Before you know, it's interesting because I'm just looking, I um, had this discussion the other day with somebody, you talk about um, like just the questionnaires and did you know, there, this is out of Canada. Um, I don't know this guy, what's his name? He's doing some work. Here it is. I'm looking at the piece of paper. 
Dave Walton, he, so he, they, they're doing some research on the therapeutic alliance and basically talking and maintaining a connection with the therapist, whether you, with, with the patient, whether you send questionnaires out or whether you sit and don't put your laptop between you and the patient, whether you sit and have an open, you know, there's no barrier between you and the patient. When you establish that, that, that connection, that therapeutic alliance and discussing you know, what was on the questionnaires or whatever, if you don't send questionnaires out, but just literally at being an active listener and taking that whole person into account, it's been shown, Susan, the research in this, that outcomes are 50% better Yeah, with something like that. Just that one little thing. You don't even have to touch the person with that, right? Right, it's, exactly. It, right? So, and you know, I think, I think this guy really just wanted, I mean, I, I can tell you that this is what he wanted. He really wanted to look at his life. He wanted to look at all things and he wanted to consider all the possibilities because even like in the, you know, he, the story that he told me was really funny because he was laughing. He goes, you must think I'm just a fruitcake. And I said, why would I think that? And he goes, because I didn't come to you first. I went here and I went there. And I said, well, you know, quite frankly, when it first came on, I would imagine that whoever you saw, you know, had a prescribed course that might, that has worked in the past for other clients. And for you, it just didn't work. And it's okay. Right. You know, right. it's like, it, it's not one size fits all. I didn't want to throw anybody under, I'm not about throwing people under the right. bus right. or doing anything like that. Um, you know, but, but and he goes, well, he goes, you know, I like to pathologize things. And he goes, and I know I do that. And he said it before I realized that I was on my third practitioner. <laughs> right, right, right. And I said, you know, it's just, it, it, I said, you're here now. Right. Let's see what we can do to solve the problem now. Let's don't worry about what happened in the past, although it's important because, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you feel yourself hanging on to all those words, you know, what can you do in real time to begin to start to change it? And I asked him, you know, finally, I said, you know, you have a, you have a great exercise routine. You know, he's, he's reconverted his basement because of COVID, you know, and I, and, you know, I said, and you understand with the treadmill that if your foot is hurting, you just back off a little bit, but you don't stop walking. Right, right. And so I said, let's apply that same strategy to this, you know, right. let's, but first we need to figure out how far you can go before it starts to bother you. Yes. And so then that then so that started to make sense to him again. It was speaking in a language that he really understood, and he had good strategies in place for other parts of his right system, you know, um, to you know. And so it was just like, let's apply that strategy here. Let's just see what happens, and see if we can't get a you know some thoughts on this, and and really you know kind of start looking at this and dosing in a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, so he was good with that because he didn't want to put splints on, you know, if he didn't have, he said he was given splints and they didn't help and, you know, just yeah, but, different things. And Right. Right. But if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the yeah. same result, right? So, exactly. So, you know, you establish a therapeutic alliance. You do, you assess a movement that's meaningful for the patient. You can, people can do whatever they want, assess nerve glides, do moat, mm -hmm. whatever. But with someone who's on their third therapist, you need to get to the heart of the problem. And you said it, problem solving. We are mm -hmm. problem solvers. I mean, mm -hmm. we can call ourselves many things, but we solve problems and we empower mm -hmm. patients to make changes in their life so they can move and feel better. And going mm -hmm. into like, okay, you show me yourself on how do you move? And that, mm -hmm. that could take up a whole treatment session for me personally. I would be mm -hmm. like just sitting there all day with the person, you know? Right, right. And, um, you know, <laughs> so... Like, I, you know, we did, we did some range of motion stuff. We looked at yeah. the neck, we looked at the arms, we bent yes. the elbows and moved them all around. Everything moved fine. Yeah. You know, nothing really brought anything on like super immediately. I mean, if I could have put him in a Tenels for a long period of time, maybe it would. Um, what really kind of bothered him a little bit more was reverse Tenels, you know, where you put the dorsum of the, of the hands mm. together with the wrist bent. Yeah. But it, you know, but he, more of it was like he talked about it being sore and he was worried that that was going to make it happen. <laughs> ah, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, you know, where, where it came on is when we were sitting, you know, with, you know, like he said, he goes, I, if I sit here like this with my cell phone for a while, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so, um, and so just for, every, for those of you who are still wanting to kind of like dig into the biomechanics just a little bit. Yes, he sat with his cell phone between his two hands with a little bit of wrist, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, ulnar uh, deviation, deviation 
on both sides, you know, and uh, thumb typing and swiping. Yeah, and so, looking down, look head. Yeah, looking down, you know. Yep. But you know, he wasn't. He, he when he sits on his couch because I know people are thinking, is he sitting with compression onto his older nerves? No, mm -hmm. yeah. he's not. He's not sitting with excessive flexion either. So right. it's just. It's bilateral. You know, what is it? So, yeah, yeah, and and it's bilateral, so that's why I went to the neck, and it's yes. like, I wonder what's yes. happening at the neck. Yes. Maybe this is coming from the neck, and you know. We talked, you know, he said, well, maybe it's because of my shoulder. And I said, but why is the left arm a problem then? Right, right. <laughs> you know, just kind of like, let's, let's, let's look at all sides of it. And I think that's what he really enjoyed or really wanted was somebody who was going to like, not sit there and roll their eyes at him, but just like, kind of like, okay, well, let's talk about the left side. If it is coming from the right shoulder and you're thinking neural tension, because he's already read every YouTube thing and looked yeah. up everything, you know, already. I mean, he's already been there. And I said, but why would you be having symptoms on the left? Yeah. You know, if it was, if it was like the right shoulder was the problem. Right. Well, maybe I'm overusing the left side because of the right side. So we did. We talked about all of that. And I said, well, let's, let's figure that out then. Yeah. Let's see yeah. if there's a component of overuse on one side or the other. And that was really good for him because what I did was allow him to strategize how to get right. himself out of it yeah. instead of me saying, look, just do this and this and you'll be fine. Right. I was like, no, he needs to like figure this out. He needs to understand it. He needs to know that he can be in control of exactly. changing the symptoms. It took the words out of my mouth because of the anxiety. People who are anxiety, I have anxiety, need to be in control. <laughs> yeah, he just, you know, he needs to know that, that I can, I can, there are things that I can do that can change this. Right. You right. know, so that's, that's how he went home the first day. So the next time he came back, um, I had two chances to see him before he went on a week and a half vacation. He was going uh, to go phot do photography for a week and a half. So it was great. So he wanted to talk about the car. He wanted mm -hmm. to talk about his cameras again, <laughs> but he really did his homework that week. I mean, that's, you know, he really did. He came back with like, okay, this is where we are. This is what's happening. Um, and so the homework you gave him was basically making changes while he's on his cell phone. And first, his first homework was, when does it come on? How long uh -huh. does it okay. take to come on? So Got he it. was able to report to me, it comes on more quicker in the afternoon and evening than it does in the morning. Mm-hmm makes sense. Okay. Yep. I said, yeah, yep. you've had an opportunity to really kind of, so it's cumulative, right? Yes. yes. And when he does his photography in the afternoon, evening, which is when he's always done it, he's already there. Yeah, he's jacked up. So yep. he did this himself. I just thought it was great. He goes, so I decided that rather than doing the things I usually do in the morning, I decided to go out and go do photography and see how long it took it to come on. Oh. And he said it was substantially different from the morning to when I would do it in the evening. So that just tells me that there's a cumulative effect going on. And he said totally. that too. He goes, I think I'm, the stuff that I'm doing all day long, maybe by the evening, it's, it gets pretty stirred up. Yes. And I said, okay, so let's figure out how we can do all those things you want to do in the day and not end up being all that stirred up by nighttime. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of sat down and just wrote things down. You know, he said, okay, if I'm sitting on the couch and I do this, it takes about, you know, he said, I, I timed it. It takes about 17 minutes, you know, for it to come on. <laughs> it's like very uh, meticulous and exact. Say, right and I was like, dog. okay, <laughs> so what, what time do you need to stop doing that? <laughs> and he was like, um, <laughs> before 17. So he did, he said, you know what, to be safe, I'm going to stop at 14. <laughs> Not even 15, rock 14. On. Yeah, rock on, you know, it's like, let's do it. And, um, you know, so we did that. We went through and then we also looked at position changes and he said some yeah. position changes made a difference. Um, others did not. He really liked having a couple of the pillows on his lap. Yeah. But he said, he goes, I'm not going to sit there with pillows on my lap. He goes, so I just got up and went to the kitchen table. Ah, okay. And put my arms on the table and put mm. the cell phone down and I didn't have yeah. to hold it and I was able to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't going to sit there and tell him, you can't use your cell phone. Don't use your cell phone. That's God. like this, you know, no. No. no, what we need to do is figure out a way for him to do it without it driving him crazy. So, yes. Yes. Um, so we, so we made those changes and then we, he really wanted to talk about, we really wanted to talk about um, nerve glide exercises. Ah. He wanted to have something to do and he had okay. read on the internet. Yes. And I don't know what, you know, he was trying to figure it out. And I said, okay, let's do it. So I said, let's do it from a perspective of, um, which is what uh, Corey Blinkenstaff does. Uh, if you guys don't know who he is, he's oh, a yes. Ian 
on the He's west coast of seattle yeah. or something yes. yeah but he has his he calls it edge work that's um, right yeah and i like it because it's just like let's find where you can move in all these different range of motions where you can kind of skirt the edge of it but not really bring the symptoms well, i love it i love and it so we kind of i said so let's let's do this from a a, a a status of curiosity rather than 10 reps of this and 10 reps of that and 10 reps of this because that didn't work for you in the past yeah let's let's kind of figure out some things maybe even a little choreography of some movements you can do before and after photography before and after because you're fixing to go on a driving trip to, to do in between and you know just to have things to do for your arms and your hands you know while you're you know while you're driving and doing the things that you want to do and um you know, so we did that. We just kind of went in different positions and we would, you know, either bring the forearm into supination or into pronation and we'd work the, the hand up and down or we'd work the neck side to side, you know, and we just did a combination of kind of some movements and, mm -hmm. and we did them singly and we did them bilaterally. Yeah. And I said, just play with it and let's see you know, while you're on vacation, just use a curiosity standpoint, you know, about how long you can do things. So with his photography, he decided he would be, you know, five to seven minutes with a camera and then he would change bodies. Mm. And I said, that sounds great. You know, whatever, like, the, perfect. And you feel free to alter that, mm -hmm. you know, because we kind of laid down, he said, let's lay down some rules. And I said, okay, the rules are you don't push through symptoms. Right, right. Let's just, because remember what we're doing here is we're not trying to be afraid of symptoms. Mm -hmm. We're trying to dose so that your nervous system can calm down. Yes. That's yes. what we're after here. Yes. So that, you know, to take that kind of fear-based piece away. It's not like we're afraid of them. It doesn't mean that anything terrible is going on. It just means that if you want this to stop, we need to get that system to be less sensitive. Yes. So exactly. we're dosing this way. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love and, it. Um, and, yeah, and, yeah, and. Mm -hmm. No, with the with the Ed, like the you didn't like he was just doing novel movement with the arms exactly exactly the head and just like he was so like fixed dance. on he was so fixed on nerve glide that you had yes. to glide the nerves and you yes. know that's David Butler's original work with the sensitive nervous system yes. yes and and I you know I don't think that there's probably something to gliding the nerves I totally agree I think that. Uh, Mr. Butler, Dr. Butler, or Professor Butler today uh, would call it, you know, oh, it's just teaching him to fall in love with his arm again. Oh, I mean, he, that's exactly the worst he, he has, would say. Oh my God. He has a video on YouTube, Susan, called David Butler does tennis court or tennis elbow. And he's dancing all over the place with the arms like he's doing the salsa. And I was like, you know, that's mm -hmm. great. It's a really, people, you should just Google it. It is an interesting YouTube it's, it's, to but it's But it's typically basically what we did, and you said it exactly, exactly right, Erica. As a novel, I gave him permission to take that basic framework that he saw on YouTube. Yeah. I said, that's yeah. great that you already saw that, because now you know what to do. Right. I said, but let's apply some of those rules to it now. Let's don't push through symptoms. So if you're really symptomatic and you want to do these things to see if it calms it down, then what are we going to do? So we kind of played around with it. Like, okay, yeah. so what if you were doing this and the symptoms were kind of there? He goes, I'd back out and I'd do it this way. Yeah. Great. I said, you just have to kind of find, and I talked to Tim about the edge work, find the edge, yes. you know, trace yes. a pattern, you know, even it. if you want to yep. um, think of it as just, you know, whatever makes you happy and whatever visual you want to put with it, that's fine. But I said, you know, that's just the rule is let's, if you're symptomatic, let's calm it down. And if you're not symptomatic, let's don't flare it up. Yes, exactly. You know, so let's kind of just go that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he had a plan for walking, you know, because he wasn't going to be near his treadmill. He was got, he had his uh, uh, wearable, wearable technology at, and he goes, I don't want to be crazy and have to hit 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. but, or 10,000 steps, steps, sorry, 10,000 feet. That'd be a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. That would be more than 10,000 steps. <laughs> But I, he, he said, I think I'm going to go from that status that you talked about with curiosity. I'm going to see how many steps I actually walk without thinking about it mm -hmm. with my photography and my vacation. And I said, okay, yeah. great. And I said, you know, just, you know, just use it as that. And I said, so any, any other things you want to think about? And he goes, well, I know about how long I can walk before my foot hurts. So it'll be interesting to see if it's different when I'm not on the treadmill. I was like, okay, cool. So he went off for two weeks and um he came back and it was just amazing it was totally amazing and his words to me were um i have great news i'm not having any symptoms at all 
I didn't have any symptoms driving. I was able to do all of the things that I wanted to do um, with my, uh, with, you know, with the cell phone or my, you know, photography and all the stuff. He goes, the only thing I notice now is a little fatigue of muscles when I'm using my cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's And it's like, it's like, great. So he says, I'm not going to, he goes, I was worried about if I needed to make a decision about surgery. He goes, that's out the door. Not mm -hmm. interested in thinking about that. Good for him. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, he just said, he goes, so now he goes, what I want to meet with is on a program. I want you to go over a program with me for my upper body exercises so I can get back yeah. working out harder again with my upper body. Yeah. Yeah. So he came in and we just went through some stuff. I basically asked him, what is it that he liked to do? And what did he want to do? You know, so he told me his routine. And I said, that's great. You want to stick with that routine too? Like, yeah. do you want to keep this in and do some other stuff? And he goes, yes, that'll be fine. Yeah. So we just went over it. You know, we talked about overhead pushes. We talked about ways where he goes, I want a plank, but I'm worried about putting my hands down on the floor. And I said, well, why don't you do, why don't we do this like you did the treadmill? Let's step it up slowly. Mm -hmm. So if you want to work into a plank on the ground, but you haven't done it in a while and you want to see how things go, why don't we do a 65, like you call them wall planks. Right. It's at 65 degrees, you know, and uh, let's see how that goes. And then you can do it on the table at, you know, 50 or 45 degrees, and then you can keep working yourself down. So he got the idea of that. Yep, and then, yep. um, you know, the other thing that I sent him home with, I said, you know, I, I said, have you ever done anything like, because I'm thinking of this central sensitized nervous system, mm -hmm. right? I said, have you ever done anything like Tai Chi or Qigong? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He, he said, <laughs> no. I have it. And I say, if I send you a couple of tapes, mm -hmm. just to try it out and see if you like yeah. it. I said, there's so many resources out there, but I said, this is kind of like a free try it and see if you like it yes. and do it and just see if it's something that strums your central nervous system. Yes, yes. And then he kind of remarked with this wistful look on his face that he goes, I've seen people in the park doing stuff like that. Yes. yes. And I said, you know, this is, it's one of those things that you could do in your living room. So, or it might be something that you could do when you're out doing photography. I don't know. I just said, I'm just going to, you know, it's just something to, to take on and try. And I did send him also, I said, you might really like the science behind this technique. Uh, the uh, Stress Less Accomplished More by Emily Fletcher, her Ziva mm -hmm. meditation. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you can get the book, by the way, everybody online. Uh, you can get it. Uh, the Kindle version is free. Oh, wow. I, I know, I right? I don't know yeah. why it is, but it is. So grab it. Yeah. Such a great book. But anyway, if you want to know the neurophysiology behind meditation, why it works, she yeah. is all over it. It is yeah. really, really very well put together. Yeah. And for those of you who want to just get yeah, right know. to the meditation, that's chapter eight. So, <laughs> and I suggest, I suggest buying the audio book, you know, the yeah. paying the extra 10 bucks for the audio book and then letting her take you through the yeah. the the meditation you know kind of a little bit of a guided she also has uh some uh there's a there's a little bit of a um free online resources that come with the book whether you buy kindle or hardback or paperback um and it takes you through some guided stuff too which is kind of cool yeah you know i love the qigong and the tai, and the tai chi i had a patient mm -hmm. recently who he uh i just saw him once and he was like you know very hypermobile gumbies in his 60s he's retiring in five weeks we've been to hawaii and he basically told me He's like, you know, I always love to do Tai Chi. And I'm like, well, why don't you start again? You know, because though he's super hypermobile, super anxious, you know, and I think, you know, yes, we mm -hmm. need to do our sort of tests and our look at biomechanics, whatever, mm -hmm. but people, they tell you, like you always have to figure out the story the patient's telling themselves. What are they telling themselves? Does it make sense? Is it valid? You need to either disabuse them of that or not abuse, like, Help, help them along if they're t like I always ask patients as we've discussed what do you think is the problem and I recently asked this of a patient and he said it's because I didn't do my exercises and I'm like interesting <laughs> you know and so I I love the, the the just the basic movements of you know especially when you're having you know neural symptoms doing any kind of movement I mean it's been shown that any like edge work David Butler's work and even meditation Tai Chi Qigong breath work that all helps and it, it 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 depends on at what stage in the in their the presentation they're coming to see you right and uh, you know if the, if someone just falls out of the you know on the ground and hurts their kneecap and it's swollen eh, 
not going to, mm-hmm. you know, you may give them some breath work, but that's like, that's more of a persistent issue, right? You know, um, I do give patients meditation sometimes from the get go because they're really jacked up, but I, I really like, um, I like the fact that he embraced everything and, and, and dosing and the dosage is really important. People like, you know, I, I tell patients, like I'd had a virtual this morning and I said, I said, if you can't do eight reps, do five, you need to do these. Okay. And then, then do your, what we call your reset exercise. And so she did mm-hmm. something with the TheraBand and it made her feel better. And she, I said, do five more. I said, I don't care if you do 10 sets of five or all in 50 at once, you know, you need to do the volume. So the dosage mm-hmm. is however you want to dose it that's fine. So, Mm -hmm. and I think that's important as well for somebody like him because he Mm -hmm. wasn't going to stop doing those things. Nope. Nope. But I just wanted him to have things to be able to do to settle things down and for him to become aware that he could actually change his symptoms. Yeah. And, you know, he wasn't so far down the pathway. I, you know, I don't, I don't, you don't have tingling and stuff unless the nerve is involved somehow, but does it always need to be repositioned and surgically changed? Oh my God. Oh, no. You know, I mean, he didn't have any changes in temperature, changes in color, changes in sensation. He had, you know, the sensation was great. He had good muscle strength. It was like, we just need to, we just need to attack this a little bit differently. But really finding out, you know, about the, you know, how sensitive is that nervous system and like kind of reframing what we're looking at rather than uh, just going straight to pain speak. It wasn't like I wanted to go straight into pain education. Yeah. That wasn't going to help either. It was more yeah. just like, how can we address his, you know, his anxious way of, of, like he said, I know I overthink it. I know I overdo it. And I, that's why I'm here. Right. Because that, he, he said, I just, I need to, you know, I'm probably pathologizing all of this. It's like, right. whether you are or not, let's just look at it from a different, let's look at it from a point of status here. Yeah. Let's try yeah. to figure out what we can do to, as Greg Lehman says, calm things down, then yeah. build things up. Right. And that's that whole therapeutic alliance and keeping the connection and, and establishing a connection and your outcomes will be better because of that. So yep. love it. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Enjoy everybody. All right, everyone. Have a great afternoon and a great week ahead and we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye.